This assignment is about process choice at Renovation Homeware, uh, which is a manufacturer of dining room furniture sets uh, selling through uh, retailers all across the country uh, and uh, has been having some issues lately. So you have a, a little bit of background given to you about the company and, and uh, historically the kinds of customers that they've had. Uh, and you've been asked to, to uh, um, give some response to some of the challenges that they've been facing, which are clearly because of uh, uh, changing profile of customers. So uh, what do they need to do in order to react to that changing profile of customers? What are some of the suggestions that you can make uh, based on operation strategy choices? So the questions, the specific questions uh, that you had for this assignment were uh, to focus on the causes of the current delivery date problems uh, and the challenges in accepting the new large volume orders with the current process design. So they have a current process design and uh, uh, what are the problems that they're facing in terms of large volume orders as well as delivery dates. A proposed process design for accepting the new large volume orders while continuing to serve the remaining customized uh, order uh, from, from the customers. So um, you were asked to come up with a way of uh, being able to serve uh, both customer segments. If, you, if renovation chose to, to stay with both customers, uh, the customers who care about customized products as well as those that wanted a standardized uh, high volume products, uh, what would you suggest they do based on some of the things that uh, you've seen in, in, uh, in terms of operation strategy choices? And then um, uh, you, you were asked to come up with other solutions. Let's say that they were uh, to do a, a huge shift uh, in terms of their strategy. Uh, what would they do uh, in, or what could they do in terms of uh, um, coming up with a completely new operations uh, strategy uh, which would require a change in business strategy as well as marketing strategy as well. So those were the questions uh, that, uh, that you had in terms of analyzing this case for renovation homeware. So let's start with, uh, with some of the background information uh, that you had about this company. So uh, it's a manufacturer of dining room furniture sets. They're historically named, uh, known for um, the, the vast range of, of uh, dining room sets that they can offer, many different designs that can be tweaked uh, based on whatever the ultimate customer wants, whatever the, the, the retailer wants, uh, and, and um, renovation was ready to do that for them. Uh, lately, they have been facing some issues in terms of the delivery dates. Uh, so what has been happening is that customers uh, who, who seem to be okay with, with longer uh, delivery schedules uh, uh, seem to be complaining about the longer delivery schedules and, and want them delivered uh, in quicker time. And not only that, uh, they seem to, renovation seems to be not making their promised delivery dates. So even if they had longer delivery dates, they were able to deliver on time earlier, uh, they seem to not be able to make their delivery dates uh, uh, at the current point in time. So what, what may be some of the issues there? Um, the, the customers uh, seem to be shifting towards demanding higher volumes and lower prices. So earlier they used to uh, have uh, very small order quantities in terms of uh, particular products. So they, they wanted um, a few pieces of uh, customized products and now they seem to be uh, wanting high volume. So it seems to be good news uh, from a marketing perspective, uh, from a business perspective, that uh, uh, they're getting a, a lot of orders, uh, but they seem to be uh, also asking for, customers uh, seem to be also asking for shorter lead times uh, as well as uh, lower prices. Uh, that seem, didn't seem to be the issue before this. Uh, so uh, w why, why is this happening? So if you think about it, what is their, uh, their historical uh, process focus? What have they been focusing on uh, until now? until they've, they've started facing these, uh, these issues. So historical customer profile has been low volume uh, orders, uh, customized orders, and, and accepting of uh, longer lead times. Uh, so the obvious process choice uh, for this would have been a job shop, right? Even without knowing uh, how, um, what, even without giving too much specific information on how they would be arranged, uh, you can think of, of uh, uh, th their um, manufacturing shop uh, to be arranged in a job shop kind of environment uh, with different departments doing different things as needed for different types of designs for different um, uh, types of dining room sets. Uh, so what goes with the job shop is the idea of flexibility in volumes uh, and accepting changes. And then you can also think of other features uh, about a job shop uh, like skill labor, uh, like the idea of uh, not thinking too much about change over times, uh, 
and uh, also the idea of uh, being able to expand capacity uh, in, in small chunks. So that would be uh, something that they would be able to do in a job shop. Now, what has happened is that the, their market has changed. So uh, what are the recent challenges that they're facing is that there seems to be a mismatch in their process arrangement uh, and, and their uh, market that they're trying to serve or the needs of the market that they're trying to serve. Uh, so the market has moved towards demanding high volume standard products and has been asking for shorter lead times. Right? They want dependability in terms of lead times, but they also want shorter lead times now. Right? So uh, that's something that, uh, uh, that they seem to be struggling with, renovation seems to be struggling with. Um, what they are trying to do is, is, is serve both types of customers. So if you think about the underlying reasons for why they are facing these problems, uh, you can see based on this mismatch what must be happening. You can make inferences about what must be, what must be happening. So when you have uh, the high volume as well as the customized products uh, going through uh, the, the same uh, kind of process, and in this case, it's a job shop process. Uh, a job shop process uh, is, is not going to think about uh, rapid changeovers, right? They're not going to think about reducing setup times. They're um, just simply because they're not dealing with, uh, uh, with uh, the idea that uh, um, it's, it's going to eat into their capacity when they have a large setup time. Uh, so they, they are easy about uh, making uh, changeovers and they don't really uh, consider them too much, to be too much of an issue. Uh, also, uh, the fact that now they would have to do uh, a lot of changeovers between high volume and low volume orders uh, would mean that the low volume orders uh, would get stuck uh, behind the large volume orders and then the large volume orders will have to be broken up because otherwise you are keeping the low volume orders behind for a longer period of time. So uh, there would be an increase uh, in, in that sense in the number of changeovers that they would be doing uh, even for the same product uh, for a high volume order, they would have had to do more changeovers. Uh, it would be definitely challenging in terms of scheduling for the same reasons. Uh, how, do you, how do you schedule uh, the different types of orders, the customized and the large volume, uh, without there being too much of a lead time uh, for, uh, for your customers? Um, the value of skilled labor, as you're increasing volume and you're trying to make more standardized stuff, uh, you have uh, skilled labor whose talents are being uh, wasted when they're making the same product over and over again, very standardized product that doesn't need too much customization. So in that sense, uh, your costs are going to remain high uh, while your customers are asking for lower prices. Uh, and the idea of expanding capacity is very different when you think about, uh, when you think about a, a job shop environment uh, versus when you want to do it for high volume. Uh, thinking about expanding capacity for a job shop, meaning that you would have to uh, add specialized equipment and in each department uh, if you wanted to increase uh, the total volume. Uh, and and uh, even if you were to do that in, in small increments, it would turn out to be uh, very expensive uh, because you're not thinking of, of um, things like automation, things like uh, taking stuff through, uh, through in, in, in uh, uh, quick flow time, you're not going to be able to uh, um, get cost effective in terms of expanding your capacity. Um, what are the, the needs of their new customers and what kind of a process arrangement uh, would that warrant? So uh, the new customers are, warrant, are wanting high volume, um, lower prices, they want discounts in their prices and they want quick lead times. So what is a process arrangement uh, that would be good for this? Um, uh, maybe they don't have enough volume for, for going for a line kind of arrangement, uh, but, but definitely more like a batch, uh, more something like uh, where they are having at least some steps that are put into a, uh, uh, a, a line or a, uh, a line that they are changing over between different types of products uh, so that they can take advantage uh, of the high volumes and uh, get them to flow through the process much quicker than they would in a job shop where they would have jumbled flows. Uh, uh, the process arrangement uh, would be more like a batch. It would be more uh, with, uh, with uh, longer runs. You would focus on the idea of uh, fewer setups and, and try to optimize, take that setup and, um, that, uh, that you might have and, and use it over a uh, larger uh, uh, production run that you would do so that uh, you are spreading that fixed cost over a larger number of units. You would be uh, focusing on that or renovation should be focusing on that. Uh, you would seek op uh, opportunities for automation, uh, taking the, the, the uh, 
um, the artistic perspective uh, out of uh, um, out of the picture in some sense or at least to some extent because uh, customers are not demanding it so the skill labor uh, coming out and and the automation going in uh, at least for some parts of the process uh, you would be focusing more on conformance to specifications uh, when, when customers uh, want a high volume product uh, they're expecting standardized product. They want product to, to look alike. Uh, they, they're going to, re to accept orders uh, based on something that's in the showroom, and then what gets delivered should be more or less uh, uh, similar to uh, what, what they saw in the showroom. So the, the, the focus has to shift from it being uh, creativity and, and uh, making uh, different types of uh, uh, units to making uh, conforming to specifications that the customer has. And, and uh, finally, they would have to give up this idea of flexibility in terms of letting customers make changes until the last minute. They would have to freeze the production schedule. Otherwise, again, going back to the idea of changeovers, uh, they would hit, be hit with a lot of changeovers. So they would have to have this idea of uh, um, focusing on, on um, freezing the production schedule and saying, look, you have to tell us in advance uh, how many products of what kind you need and then uh, so so what would happen is that uh, some of their the, the customers who were earlier able to make the changes might not be happy but this is something that they need to uh, think about if they're going to uh, uh, think about serving those customers um, that want high volume and, and lower prices right now uh, next part of, of this assignment asked you to think about a uh, proposed process designs for if they were to combine uh, both of these types of customers, right? So what would be a, a good process design? And, and here I give you uh, two options that uh, you could have considered, right? One is the idea of a plant within a plant. Uh, now, if you um, uh, recall, uh, we may have talked about this uh, where you can have the idea of uh, uh, a, a certain uh, part of the, the machine, uh, the, the shop, uh, having a job shop kind of arrangement whereas uh, a certain part of the shop, uh, of the manufacturing shop, having a uh, batch kind of arrangement. Uh, what do we mean by that? You have both of them under the same roof. Uh, that gives you some advantages in terms of sharing of knowledge, uh, but you use the job shop for customized and you use the uh, batch for high volume. Uh, so that would be one design, a plant within a plant kind of uh, uh, an arrangement. Um, now, uh, we, we have an example here of Harley-Davidson motorcycles uh, which produces, and, and we may have talked about this earlier, that they produce uh, their um, motorcycles that go into the showroom, the standardized motorcycles, as well as those that are customized for particular customers. Uh, both of them are uh, made uh, pretty much under the same roof, but, but uh, they have uh, very uh, distinct processes uh, separated from each other, uh, although there is some sharing of knowledge and, and some sharing of uh, um, competencies uh, between those two processes as well. Uh, so uh, that would be one arrangement that they could use, that they could consider if they wanted to go after both these customer segments, go after the order winners and qualifiers of both these customer segments. The second uh, uh, arrangement that, that you could have thought of is uh, maybe uh, think of splitting the process, right? So uh, the, 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 the idea of uh, having a, a made-to-stock uh, arrangement up to a certain extent uh, and then uh, maybe continuing with a high-volume uh, for the for the um, for the standardized products, and then having a job shop for for the customization for the uh, products that are going to be customized. Now, this would need uh, some type of uh, uh, adjustment to the expectations that the customers have. What kind of customization you would be able to offer? It it uh, sh should not go all the way back into the process. So you can push product all the way to a certain extent based on. Uh, um, made to stock kind of uh, or having a standardized product uh, more more like a standardized product to a certain extent and then from then on um, uh, getting getting it customized based on whatever the customer wants so these are two possible combinations that you would have thought of uh, that you could have thought of and 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 both should uh, in theory uh, be able to work uh, if if renovation would decide to go after both types of customers so the, the, la, the, the other part of the assignment that uh, you were, had to think about uh, was the, the process, uh, um, uh, process related decisions that you would have to think about if you were uh, going after both types of customers uh, and, and um, what would they be? Um, your purchasing uh, for your, your process would have to be high volume. 
So earlier, when you're talking about customized product, making it specifically for, uh, for certain customers and, and uh, having a flexible process, your purchases may not have been very high volume. You may not have thought about uh, it, it uh, too much. Uh, MRP system or an ERP system that helps you uh, schedule better, an enterprise uh, uh, resource planning system or a manufacturing resource planning system that helps you plan better uh, based on uh, what is the demand of that parent product and breaking it down into the different sub-assemblies that are needed and, and sending the orders uh, out to, to different departments that need to make that, uh, those sub-assemblies so that the final product can be assembled. Uh, that's something that they would have to think about uh, based on, uh, on this high volume market uh, that, seems to be, um, uh, that seems to be coming up uh, at a faster rate. Uh, forecasting uh, of uh, production volumes, or what kind of uh, volumes are they expecting would be needed in, ter in order to make investments uh, into large, uh, large volume kind of automated uh, batch systems or line systems. Uh, they would have to uh, at least uh, limit the, the number of designs that they would offer. So earlier we talked about different process arrangements, and there we said we need, we need to adjust the expectations of customers at least to some extent. So renovation may have to do that to some extent. Uh, they may have to go back to the design process uh, for designing their furniture and think about more uh, modular designs and part commonality. Uh, can they uh, have certain types of... Uh, uh, assemblies, sub-assemblies in stock that they can that they can combine in different ways uh, based on on the orders that they get and that they can um, that they can store that they can keep in stock whenever they have uh, slack times uh, from their large volume lines. Um, they can uh, focus on reducing the change over time. Uh, that would be useful in terms of uh, uh, being able to have a, a line that is high volume at the same time. Uh, not that inflexible in terms of changeover. And then they would also have to think about uh, their, their employees in terms of the skill of the employees and what kind of skill set uh, they, would, uh, they would expect uh, their employees to have. So those would be uh, some process-related decisions that they would need to make. And here you can see that uh, these might uh, have impact on their hiring. These might have impact on their uh, design and R&D as well. Now, uh, finally, the last part of the assignment asked you to come up with alternatives. So, so think radically and say, uh, what if uh, um, renovation would decide that uh, we, we, we want to make, a, uh, we want to, to uh, state the terms here. We want to be in this market on our own terms. Uh, so here, um, I give you two choices that you could have come up with. Uh, one is uh, either they could have focused on uh, the customized and said, uh, this is what we're good at. Um, well, we, we don't really want to get into that standard product market and, and we will go after different customers who care about this customization. We'll, we'll move away from uh, our current customers who are getting into high volume and, and uh, go find a different uh, niche, uh, a, a market that cares about what we are good at. So that would preserve their core competencies. They would continue to offer what they're offering. Uh, and then they would have to uh, work with, uh, with business strategy as well as their, their marketing strategy folks to see if that's something that everybody agrees with and, and that they can uh, go after in an aligned fashion. So that would be important if they were to decide on, on uh, this kind of uh, a, uh, uh, a focus going forward. Uh, another focus that they could have, uh, an alternative focus, the opposite extreme of the customized would be uh, completely give up on the customized and focus only on the standardized. So no breaking up uh, uh, the process as from uh, uh, being a job shot to a plant within a plant or a uh, combining two different types of processes, uh, but completely going after uh, the, the high volume market, uh, which would require a drastic change uh, in terms of not only the production process, uh, but also, as it says here, they're purchasing, they're scheduling their technology and the people. So this would be, uh, in some sense, a bigger risk uh, getting into a market uh, that uh, they may not be very familiar with. Uh, but this is certainly something that they would consider as being a, uh, um, a choice that, that they have uh, to, to make.